Hello everybody, welcome to Talk About House, I'm Todd. I'm Juana. Okay, so this video is gonna be a little different than our normal video. Uh, normally we do videos just about the real estate market, housing, things mm -hmm. like that. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, um, today is just about how to pay off any debt early. Mm -hmm. We're gonna talk about some strategies for just average people, whether it's car loan, student loan, uh, credit card, things like that, right? Right, so basically an installment loan. Any, yeah, any installment loan. We're gonna do a separate video about mortgages because we've got some very cool things that we want to share with you about doing mortgage payment. Okay, so why are we doing this? Very inspired. Uh, my son, who was a software engineer, mm -hmm. when he graduated college, he had about $30,000 in debt. Mm -hmm. And he just finished his first year as a software engineer. And of course, you know, software engineer is a pretty decent paying job. So I asked him, I was like, how are things are going? He goes, going good. And, you know, and I said, you know, and he goes, yeah, he goes, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be paid, have my loan paid off pretty soon. And I was like, wait, how is it? I thought, well, isn't that like a 10 year loan? Like student loans are 10 year loans. He goes, yeah, but I'm making payments. Mm -hmm. Like I'm making extra payments. So I go, what are you down to? He said, I'm down to like $12,000. That's awesome. He's paid, <laughs> so he's $30,000 loans already down to 12. Nice. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to give you some tips and strategies for people maybe that are looking for some help or maybe don't have like a ton of discipline or just looking for something to like get started. Right. So if you have somebody in your life that uh, has an installment loan that might need some help, you might want to share this video with them. So let's go. Okay. Uh, so here, here's the first step. Uh, create a budget. Um, and the reason why you create a budget is to find those things that you probably you know aren't really a priority. So this says start by creating a budget, track your income and expenses. This will help you identify areas where you can cut back on unnecessary spending and allocate more money towards debt repayment. How, how, what, Wanda, what are some tips the average person can use that are watching this video to just figure out, like, like they may not even realize how much money they're spending. How can they go figure this out? Okay, so most people um, tend to spend their money on credit or debit cards, uh, and a lot of them have all kinds of budget tools, so you can use that to figure out what categories you're spending in and where you're spending your money. So let's say, for example, that you realize that hey, you know what, I go out to lunch every day and it's costing me 20 bucks. That's, you know, $100 a week. It's $440 a month. So maybe uh, I'll go out to lunch, you know, every other day. So that saves you a little bit. Or maybe uh, I'll go out to lunch three times a week or, you know, whatever. Pack so, a sandwich. Oh, pack a sandwich, whatever. Uh, you know, maybe you have all kinds of recurring um subscriptions that you're paying and you have forgotten about. So take a look at your credit cards, take a look at your bank account and see what recurring payments you have that maybe those are things that you're using anymore. Um, I, you know, I, I hope that everybody's going to gym, but if you're not going to gym and you are paying for that gym membership, that might be something to uh, go ahead and remove off your credit card or debit card and use that money elsewhere. So there are all kinds of ways that you can save money. I'm not suggesting you should never go to Starbucks, but maybe go to Starbucks there, a little less often. I'm going to say something extremely unpopular. Okay. There is nothing your body has to have that they have at Starbucks. <laughs> That's true. There is nothing nutritional in what you get. If you need the caffeine, just go buy some, you know, roasted coffee at the store and cook it in a, you know, you can go to Walmart for 10 bucks and get a little Mr. Coffee and cook it at home. There you go. So there are lots of things that you can do. Um, so take a look at how you're spending your money and figure out what is actually a necessity, what isn't, what truly improves your quality of life and what really doesn't. And remove those things that are extras that you just don't need or at least don't need that much. Okay, so here's the first. The, the, so there's a couple techniques we're gonna talk about. The first is the snowball method. Okay. This strategy involves paying off the smallest debt first while making minimum payments on other debts. Once the smallest debt is paid off, you can roll that payment into the next smallest debt, and so on. This method provides a psychological boost as you see debts being eliminated one by one. What do you think? Do you think people need that? Like that psychological? Like they feel like they're making, you know, it's just like losing weight, right? Well, okay, so it's more than psychological. And the reason it's more than psychological is because we have minimum payments on all of our, uh, all of our debt. And so when we remove one, uh, one debtor or one, uh, one creditor, uh, that means that we remove one minimum payment. And that actually helps us because now we have less payments that are due uh, that are obligatory. So it actually helps your credit overall. So it has multiple benefits. Uh, the next is the avalanche 
method. Ooh, that's These cool. have very snowy <laughs> themes. Um, we need some snow. It's it's summertime. Yeah. <laughs> with this approach, you focus on paying off debts with the highest interest rate first. By targeting higher interest debts, you can save more money on interest payments over time. Wanna between a car payment, student loan, and credit card, which is probably the highest interest payment. Probably your credit card. Mm. Now, here's the thing. Uh, I greatly would encourage you to pay off your credit card. The issue with that credit card is that people tend to uh, go ahead and charge on their credit card again. So it becomes this uh, vicious cycle. So if that's one of your issues, then uh, leave the credit card at home, remove it from your phone, uh, you know, do whatever you need to do to uh, keep yourself from charging more money to that credit card. But do not close that account. And this is super important. Do not close that account because that account actually helps you with your credit score because it helps you because you are proving that you are uh, reliable and you make your payments on time. And also remember part of your credit score is based on the age of your credit. So you want to keep that credit card in good standing even if it has a zero balance so that the age of that credit card continues to appreciate and that helps your credit score. Okay, this is a this is a trickier one. Debt consolidation. If you have multiple debts with high interest rates, consolidating them into a single loan with lower interest rate can help simplify your payments and potentially save money on interest. What about the parent? Okay, so people who are maybe younger. The parent approach. Mom and dad, I have twenty thousand dollars of total debts. Um, you know, what if I just paid you guys? 300 bucks a month for the next so many whatevers and then you I just paid off all these things and promise not to you know incur any more debt because I want to buy a house or do some other thing right um, sounds good I'm not a fan not a fan not okay. a fan so the reason I'm not a fan is twofold one because when you consolidate your debt that way and you owe a person the money you are more likely to default on that payment to that person okay because that person is a person and not a creditor, so it's easier to be late, not make payments. So that's that's not a good thing. Uh, the reason, the other reason I'm not a fan is because debt is not necessarily a bad thing, and this is what I mean. When you consolidate your loan, you still have a creditor that is reporting your on time on time payments to the credit reporting agencies, which is good for you because that's improving your credit. So that is excellent. Um, now, the tricky part with this is that when you consolidate your debt that way and you pay off your other creditors, those lines of credits remain open, which I just said, you know, please keep those other lines of credits op credit open because they help your credit. But what I don't want you to do is continue to use those other lines of, of credit, right? I don't want your, credit, your um, debt to increase. So again, you have to be disciplined and do what you need to do to keep yourself from continuing to accrue debt. You know, it's kind of interesting. Today, kids get credit cards pretty easy, um, you know, an Apple card or whatever. But I remember when it was, you couldn't just get a credit card. Mm -hmm. And the, what people used to get were gas cards, mm -hmm. like a Shell card or a Phillips card. And it only worked at those stations. And it was a credit card to buy gas at those stations. And you didn't do it at the machine. They, it wasn't that advanced. They literally had this thing that they like put and they scanned it. It was a mess. But, um, and then the other thing was like, like a Sears card or when you went sh to a department store, Macy's had them and you could get, you know, they would, you, and they still do have those. I don't know how those affect credit, but the, the idea was if you got those first, this is, of course, I'm talking about the 1980s. If you got those first, then later on they would say, oh, now you qualify for our, a credit card. That's just, you could use on anything. And it would, like I think my first credit card, 1984, I had a $500 limit. But 1984 was, you know, I was on active duty. I wasn't making that much money. So it was 500 bucks because I wasn't, you know, going to spend that much money. Okay, so for your knowledge, um, stores still do have credit cards, but they are not their own. They are in partnership with, for example, uh, Visa or American right. Express or somebody like that. They are not their own credit cards. Yeah, they used to have their own finance. Right, they don't. They do don't. So just so you know, I'm not old enough to have had a Shell credit card. I started out with a regular credit card. Oh, because you're super young. <laughs> All right, keep going. No, that was it. That was it. Those okay. were the three things. I just, you know, we obviously we can't solve everybody's problems, 
but I was just so inspired by my son telling me he'd literally, you know, he says probably six to eight months, he's going to have the rest of it paid off. And awesome. I'm like, 30,000 bucks in 18 months. Uh, and, you know, and what I think is more impressive is that he's super disciplined and he worked, you know, college took more than four years because he worked during the time and he did it all on his own. He paid for everything and now he's paying it off. And he's, he actually got a major in something that means something. It, he, he can have a career in it. So, um, that was, I just thought that was cool. And I wanted to try to help, you know, other people out, mm -hmm. you know, with something. Plus he's really proud of his son. I am. He's, <laughs> I am proud of my daughter too. She's That's super right. smart. She's not, you know, she has a job. She doesn't, you know, they don't care. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I know. All right, please, if this was useful to you, if you got some good information out of it, if you think somebody else could use this information, uh, please subscribe, like the video, share the video with somebody who could use the information, uh, leave us some comments. We love your comments. Please be nice to one another in the comments, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Bye.